Hello once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a benchmarking piece of software. So this basically benchmarks your PC for performance. Um, but what's so good about this one? It's free, and it doesn't. You don't really. You don't have to install it. Yeah, I think it's about five megabytes in total. Um, you just download it, click on it. And you're ready to go so once you click on it this is what we're greeted with welcome to user benchmark benchmark suits typically takes less than a minute to complete right so we're gonna components to benchmark so we've got the processor the graphics fixed drives memory and USB sticks we, we I don't for some reason we can't click none of that off um, so okay we do have a USB stick in the machine because that's where I've put the program, well, I've downloaded, so I could benchmark it on other PCs as well. Um, so we're going to run it on my main PC, and here we go. Let's run it. So, it, well, it says it'll take about a minute. We'll see. Might take a little bit longer than that, but it certainly doesn't take that long. But we're also going to see some graphical things popping up as well um, then after it's done it will come up with the with the tests with the conclusions of the test and that will take you to a web page so it's going through pretty quickly now Yeah, so I don't know what it's doing. Oh, it's reading and writing, so it's testing the drives now. So really, you don't need to download any additional drive testing software. I do have another drive testing software. I think it's called oh, something like Benchmark or something like that. Crystal Benchmark, is it? I don't know. It's quite a popular one. But this does it all. Yeah, that drive H is my um, USB drive, USB stick. Here we go, now we're going to the graphics. Now it's testing the graphics card. doesn't do it as a full screen there are other benchmarking softwares where it does you can see it testing the graphics I do have a couple of them myself but you do have to install them onto your computer so that's the graphical tests over with I don't know what he's doing here though. Right, so now it's going to connect. So here we are. So this is the benchmark altogether. Right, so gaming 96% nuclear submarine. So it's pretty good for gaming. Desktop. Aircraft carrier 88% and workstation 74% is a battleship. <laughs> so there are the comes up with your PC specs right there. So that's the motherboard. That's how much RAM I got available. The display I'm running, so I'm running it in 4K. Um, operating system. So yeah, so know what that means. Right, so now we can have a look at the the percentiles. Right, okay, let's start with the processor Intel Core i7 7070K. That's how much it's worth apparently. I don't know, that's to, obviously today. So, yeah, it tells you about it. Um, LGA, to, 
8 4 cores, 8 threads, that's the basic the processor. I don't know what I'm running, I don't know if it's running at 2 4.5, but performing below expectation 33rd percentile. So improvements can be made, but that's probably, I can make it via the BIOS or something like that. It can be over, it can run at 4.5 gigahertz, but I think I've got to change the setting in the BIOS screen. So let's have a look here. Normal, 93%, heavy, 74%, and server, 46%. Well, I'm not running it as a server, so that really doesn't matter. So let's have a look at the next one, the graphics card, the NVIDIA GTX 1080. Well, today's money, it's worth 300 quid, but I know I paid a lot more for it about four years ago. In fact, over double the amount. Yeah, they were quite expensive back then. Right, so performing below expectation again. 36 percentile. I don't know why that is. Um, it didn't say that when I ran it the first time. It didn't say anything about that. Right, 102 percent outstanding. Well, the first test I ran it, it said 105 percent. So. I don't know, perhaps it changes his mind all the time, or maybe because I'm running the recorder, maybe that's slowing the percentage down a bit. Right, so, DirectX X9, 103, why didn't it give me a DirectX 11? I don't know what the reason behind that is. Um, right, so, yeah, improvements can be made apparently. Maybe I have to change something in the BIOS settings again. Um, so now let's get to the drives. So this is the crucial one terabyte drive. Um, so it's a solid state drive. So performing performing as expected. Okay, 55th percentile. Okay, so 85%, 85% excellent. So the read and write's good. So they will look quite good. So now we get to the two hard drives. So, so let's have a look at the first one, the Seagate desktop SSHD. Yeah, because it's a hybrid drive apparently, 4 terabyte, 83.1%. So performing above expectation, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so there's the settings. And now we've got another one, an Atachi, just a normal hard drive, 4 terabyte. And in fact, this used to be a external hard drive i took the external part out and now use it as an internal drive i think it works better like that um so that's 90 that's actually better 90.9 percent outstanding yeah that's good so we'll ignore that because as i said that's the usb drive so that's not really important so now we come to the memory the corsair vengeance lpx ddr4 32 right it's good but performing below potential ensure that dual channel xmp bios profile is enabled but i know for a fact that's disabled so at least this tells you you can improve your system that's what i like about it it is a good um benchmark tester um it's free it doesn't take up no space on your hard drive as it as i said it runs once you download you run it without having to install nothing so it is a good tester i would highly recommend it if you want to um, do a bench test of your pc get this one anyway i'm going to end this now thank you so much for watching till next time and goodbye